East End of Dayton. It's a rough neighborhood. You know, everybody's on drugs or they're selling it. You got to have self-defense or they will beat you down in this city. My son was a, mostly a good kid growing up. I just didn't feel socially accepted. I just felt like an outcast. <laughs> little kids used to run him home when he was little, and I'd ask him why he's running. He said he didn't want to fight, he wanted to play. He did get into some fights. You know, most kids, especially in this neighborhood, you know, they're going to get into some stuff. So I said, OK, you want to do this? I took him to the gym. I had a gym in Moraine, a Walker Submission Kickboxing. And I ended up teaching him. That's when Rob quit running. My dad, he's a, he's a really good trainer. He's strict. He don't give no pats on the on the back or anything like that. Every single night after work, they would go to the gym. They'd be there for hours. I started learning anything that would work on the street, in the ring, anything like that. I kind of enjoyed it because I was winning all them fights. People are all like, oh, Rob's a badass, all that stuff. Everybody's trying to get, get you to party with them, and I was already getting in drugs. Like, uh, if you got that sense of insecurity and stuff like I had, you're going to do it because you want to be cool. You know what I mean? You, you want these people to like you. I was inducted in the USA Morris Arts Hall of Fame. I think it was 2006. Rob won nationals that year. Yeah, I won, uh, won the unanimous decision. After that, uh, I went pro. 18 years old, I went pro. I went on uh, for a while. I, I had a, quite a few fights. The environment I grew up in was uh, highly toxic. Jacked his sister quite often. They were like this together. I drift off and go fool with all these people. After I was into drugs and all that shit, I didn't care. My daughter was uh, murdered. She passed away, and it kind of messed everybody up. I was wilding out doing all kinds of stuff, and I was bad. You know, when you see somebody that you look up to do that stuff, you're going to do it too. Because I was out to look cool. And I shouldn't look cool for nobody but God. Sorry. He lost a couple fights. After that, I was strung out. And I didn't have the, you know, the focus. Honestly, I was going to quit, but, you know, she got a son. Devin, he's a good kid. Reminds me of his mom a lot. His mother was uh, murdered when he was little, I think about two years old. My nephew ain't got nobody after my parents are gone, it's just me. They do right by him. I ain't been able to really get a, a good knockout or anything in uh, MMA so far because I'm always get, going to the floor. So I just uh, broke down and went ahead and started doing jiu-jitsu, and as I learned it, I fell in love with it. It's kind of sparked my uh, interest in fighting again.
Yo, I got everything I need here. I can show my nephew, uh, my other kids, you know, uh, that they can make it out of this trench. I know I can make it. I just, the only reason I ain't made it yet is because of me. I, I know what I'm capable of. My time can happen at any moment. And uh, I won my last fight, and I got a four fight contract now. We just had him signed to fight a guy. I, I will fight everybody I can till I get to a UFC title. You'll get his shot. You guys will see tonight. I don't think about it really. When I'm in there, I just try to feel it. There's a calm there. As long as you know yourself, you know your opponent, so there's nothing to fear. So, like if somebody throws a jab at, at your stomach, you, you tense down like this to protect your stomach and you leave certain things open. And I know that I react a certain way. I can make him react the same way. It's gorilla chest. They make a wrong move and boom, I got your king. People can let pain and all that stuff eat them. You can't let your past dictate your future. You, you gotta let it inspire it. I'm coming. Ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs>